Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will show you how you can make a cool lazy staggered grid in Jetpack Compose in just a few minutes. So we will build something like this that you have a grid where each item has its individual height and you can also specify a number of columns you want to have such as two here and then you have a very cool scrollable and lazy loading grid. Because this type of composable is quite new in Jetpack Compose, let's actually take a look what kind of versions you need to make sure to have in your build.gradle files. Um, first of all, in your build.gradle project file, you want to make sure that you use this Compose UI version. I'm not sure if it is also available for lower versions, um, but this is the one I used and in this version it's certainly available and you also want to make sure to go to your build.gradle app file in which you scroll down and make sure you use this Kotlin compiler version. Then you will actually also have this type of composable. Um, and also maybe this Kotlin version, so in case your project does not build, make sure you also use Kotlin version 1.8.10. If you've done that, let's jump into main activity and start building our layout so you know how to use this type of composable. The first thing I want to do is I want to just define a little data class here that represents one item in our grid. So um, just to have a fixed height and a fixed uh, color for each item. So we can just call it list item or so, give it a height of dp and we can give it a color like this. And we will just then randomly generate these colors. Make sure to use these Compose UI graphics colors as an import. And then below this, we can have our composable random color box or so like this, we then include a box and just assign a modifier of let's say fill max width. So we want the box to occupy all the width it can get. We give it the height of our item, which we need to pass of course to our box. So item of type list item. We then say, I wanna clip this to a rounded corner shape to just give it a, um, a little bit of round corners to make it look better, import dp, so we set it to 10 dp, and then finally we want to set the background to our item color, just like this. So these will just be our dummy items so that we can actually see something in our column. Let's then go to our main content block here and actually use our lazy uh, vertical staggered grid. This is the new composable that we now have. Let's import that and here we first of all need to specify columns and then content. Let's make the content like uh, this. It's just as a normal lazy column, just that we now have the um, staggered grid behavior or rather a normal lazy grid. For the columns, we actually have two options. On the one hand, we have adaptive and on the other hand, we have fixed. Let's start with fixed and here we need to pass the count. So how many columns we actually want to have in our uh, staggered grid. Let's start with two. And you can see we also get a bunch of errors. Uh, we simply need to hit Alt Enter on that and add this experimental annotation to main activity. You're probably used to that when using Compose. Uh, a lot of stuff ex is marked as experimental. Let's add that to main activity and the errors will go away. Let's then also add a modifier to fill the whole size of our screen with that uh, staggered grid. And we want to add some padding. So we pass a content padding of padding values 16 dp. And in this block of this lazy vertical staggered grid, it's actually the same as in a lazy column. We just include an items block to display a list of items. Let's define the list of items first. So right here in onCreate, we can have our um, items and let's create that. By, by looping over the values from one to 100 and we map these to our list items. So map, oops, not this list item, actually just the list item data class we created and we randomly generate a height. So something like random.nextInt and we want to generate a height between let's say 100 and 300 dp. We say dot dp and we're good. And let's also choose a color for this, which we also randomly generate um, since colors are in the end just integers or longs, we can also easily randomly generate these. So we can say color, here we need to pass this long value, so we can say random.nextLong and we cap it at the maximum um, color we could get, so simply 8 Fs here I think, yes, one more. And then we call it copy and set the alpha value to 1f. So we have really solid colors. And again, this is just for demonstration. Of course, in real project, you would have real composables in it. But I think with different colors and different heights, we can easily demonstrate this behavior of this stack of grid. 
We then go ahead in this block and say we have items. We pass our items and we need to make sure that we use this actual items import here. So we hit uh, enter on this items list parameter here and then we should be good. Yes, we now get each item here as a parameter and we can then use that to display a random color box passing this item. So right now, again, we just specified that we have two columns in this staggered grid and yeah, each item will then be displayed. Each item will have its individual height and we can now launch this in our emulator to take a look how that looks like. So our app is launching and yes, uh, that is looking like a staggered grid. We are missing uh, spacing between these um, grid items, of course, but we already have this behavior that we want that each item has its individual height. How can we now add the spacing between each item? Well, for that, we can use the horizontal arrangement and we can set it to arrangement that's spaced by. Um, using that, we can define an amount of space we want to have between each item. For example, 16 dp. This is now just horizontally. So if we launch this again, you will see that we will now have 16 dp horizontally between each item. And we can do the same vertically by simply adding a vertical arrangement and setting it to arrangement space by 16 dp. And then if we relaunch this, you will see that we actually have exactly what I showed you before. And you'll also notice if you change this um, number here to three, let's say, then you will have three columns in your staggered grid and you can choose anything like 10, for example, and you will have 10 columns in here. Um, but I mentioned in the beginning that we also have a different uh, type of column we can have here in a lazy staggered grid, and that is adaptive. This does not take a fixed column count. Instead, it takes a minimum size. Because let's say you have a staggered grid and depending on how much space there is available, you want to show a different number of columns. So let's say on phone screens, you just want to show two columns, but on tablet screens, you just want to show as many columns as actually fit. So in that case, you can use staggered grid cells that adaptive to define a minimum size. So a minimum size each single grid item should have. In this case, uh, this refers to its width. So if we say each item should at least have 100 dp width, and if we relaunch this, take a look here, then now this uh, staggered grid composable decided for us that based on this screen size of my emulator, there are actually three columns that fit into this and it will maximize the space for each one. So this does not mean that, that every single grid item is now exactly 100 dp wide, but it does mean that each single item should at least be 100 dp wide. And then considering all the spacing between these, it should take a look how many it can actually fit into this. Because if we would now have four items, then for this screen, it could not ensure anymore that each item is at least 100 dp wide. If we set this to 50 dp, for example, and take a look, and then you'll see now it actually is able to fit six of these into our, uh, into our lazy grid. And if we rotate this, then it's actually able to fit a lot more into our um, staggered grid because now there's much more space to fill. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, then definitely also check out the description. You'll find more advanced Android premium courses there, which will help you to become an industry-ready Android developer in the fastest time possible. So if you want to learn things like multi-module architecture or building apps for iOS and Android using Kotlin with KMM, then definitely check the first link and you'll find all my premium courses. Apart from that, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you back in the next one. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.